says work on unfinished homes may recommence next month. But two weeks after the company shut its doors, the future for suppliers and contractors is less certain. They came in their hundreds searching for answers, but they didn't like what they were hearing. Families like myself, where are we supposed to live once we've sold our house, we're paying $180 rent money. If someone is in such a desperate state where they have no relative or friends to which they can go to, then there are recognised charities that will provide temporary housing. Those charities are already feeling extra pressure as would-be Avonwood homeowners become homeless. Now where do they go? What do they do? They can't go into a, a lease situation because of the added cost of that. Uh, furniture storage, they have no money for that. The number of homeowners left in the lurch by Avonwood has risen to more than 1,000. Their situation is bad enough, but for up to 4,000 subcontractors and suppliers, it's even worse. They could be paid as little as 10 cents for every dollar they're owed. Some of them are, I'm aware of are already considering bankruptcy proceedings or have entered into voluntary administration in regard to their own companies. The best hope for suppliers and subcontractors is for the provisional liquidator to become a project manager, farming out work to those owed money by Avonwood. But that plan needs approval from insurers. We're sitting home on our bums not working and we've lost our ability to earn an income. With almost 80 builders lining up to take on Avonwood's unfinished work, it's hoped construction can start within a few weeks. For the building industry, it won't be fast enough. The Avonwood uh, issue has tended to spook the market. The other uh, major players are saying that uh, sales have begun to, uh, to stall. More than 100 frustrated homeowners have terminated contracts, choosing to find their own builder in a troubled market rather than battle red tape. Natasha Simpson, ABC News, Melbourne. An Indonesian court has convicted 24 soldiers and a civilian of mass murder in the strife-torn province of Aceh homes have to be completed by the company. The owners of the rest say they face more months of uncertainty. Brett McLeod reports. As the company's liquidator addressed the media today, first came the good news on a deal with two insurance companies to get Avonwood building some houses again. Works will commence next Monday and at least two of those homes will be handed over by next Friday. But the majority are insured by a third company, Dexter, which refused to deal with Avonwood. Instead, those 550 homeowners have to cancel their contracts with Avonwood and start the whole process again with another company approved by Dexter. Maybe another five or six months down the track to go before maybe getting our homes completed or even getting a builder back on site. The liquidator admits Dexter's decision not to deal with Avonwood jeopardises any hope the building company could have traded its way out of debt. If Dexter had come to the party, creditors would have got 100 cents of the dollar and the company more than likely would have been returned back to its shareholders without the threat of liquidation. Another group in the Avonwood saga who received bad news today, subcontractors, who've been told it'll be next year at the earliest before they receive any money owing to them by Avonwood. George Theodoridis Painting Company is owed $50,000. And they're looking at them, the homeowners that is, leaving us out in the wilderness. He says some contractors have been told they may get as little as 40 cents in the dollar. Brett McLeod, National 9 News.